Hey everybody, it is so good to be online with you this morning. You've got Luke Taylor here and... Rach Hope. <laughs> uh, we love gathering together with our online family. We do. Um, seeing all your friendly faces typing, probably more than faces, yes. but typing in the chat room. <laughs> uh, welcome this morning. We are a week away from Easter. That was last week, right? Yeah, a week, yeah. Yeah, a week yeah. away a from? A week, week from. From. Easter. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's all the sugar yes. going on in my brain right now. Uh, we want to know. How did you go celebrating Easter? Were yeah. you a part of a communion supper? Did you mm -hmm. gather in your homes with people? Did you overdose on a few um, Easter eggs, perhaps? Yes. Enjoy a little bit of extra sugar? Yes. Put it in the comments right now. Go crazy, please don't be shy. Yes. How was your Easter weekend? So tell us, did you celebrate a communion supper? Mm -hmm. Did you eat too many eggs? Um, how were the hot cross buns? All of those things. How was your Easter weekend? The best, it was so yes. fun. So it's did so you great. eat a lot of too much. too much. I'm still, I've got so much in my cupboard. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm, I'm putting a few away to yeah. in, in future weeks. I don't need that much sugar totally. in one hit. Yep. Um, fantastic. Now, if you are joining us on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for joining us today. We welcome you. And of course, we, we're so proud that you will be a part of our Hope You See online community. Mm. Now, however, if you this morning would like to engage in our chat room with prayer, receiving prayer, or just in, engaging with our leadership team here at Hope You See, uh, what you need to do is stay on, you can stay watching the, sh uh, the service on YouTube or Facebook, but why don't you grab another device and head over to hopeyouseed.tv where you can engage in the chat room. And that's where our amazing online team are ready to pray with you and stand in faith, They're ready to answer any questions you might have and just go along this journey of faith with you. So Facebook and YouTubers, welcome. Head over to hopeyouseed.tv if you want to engage in the chat. We love having you this morning. Mm. We are also really excited about our new instrumental album that has just yeah. been released. So we're going to head to a video from Pastor Darling to share a bit more about that album. Well, we are excited. We have a new instrumental project that we've been working on this year called Come Up Here, a symphony of prayer. It's an invitation to prayer and worship, to intimacy with God. We're really believing this album will be a powerful accompaniment to your times of prayer and worship. There are 12 tracks that are all written from within our Hope You See community by our team. And I tell you what, we are just praying that this soundtrack will be a great, great blessing to you as you draw near to God. So it is called Come Up Here and it's available now wherever you download your music. And we are just praying that it will be a great, great blessing to your personal journey of prayer. Oh, fantastic. I have been so enjoying the instrumental album. How about yourself? Loving it. Yep, playing it in the car. Yes. You will this All week play it in the car. Yeah, <laughs> good. Get that song um, on, get those songs, sorry, on in your car, listen to them, let them be a really great um, instrumental addition to your prayer life. Mm. The um, other thing we want to tell you about church is our gathering is coming up soon and the early bird price ends this week, the 30th of April. Now, if you want to access the special early bird pricing, all you need to do is head to hopeyouseegathering.com. Register today. It's that simple, that easy. Of course, after this week, registrations are still available. It just won't be the early bird price. So if you want to get in and get a good, cheap ticket, get in there today. Hopeyouseegathering.com. We are also so, so excited to celebrate some beautiful people on Sunday, the 8th of May, our amazing mums. So we would love to have everyone at our campuses to come bring your families together to celebrate the beautiful spiritual and natural leaders in your life. Yeah, awesome. World Church, why don't you grab your emblems um, wherever you're joining us from at home or in the car or out on a walk, whatever it might be. Grab your emblems and we're going to um, come up, gather around communion right now. We've got an amazing teaching on communion. So grab whatever you've got, even if it's some leftover uh, hot cross buns or chocolate and tea. Uh, we're going to receive communion together in this holy moment. Hi everyone, my name's Megan and it's my absolute honour and privilege to be leading us around communion today. If you haven't already, grab your emblems as I share with us. Uh, I want to let you in on a little bit of a secret. For those who know me <laughs> and the people in my world could confidently tell you that I love to be chosen. I love to be picked for things. As a child, whenever we had awards in school or sports teams, 
I was that kid, you could picture it in your mind, sitting up straight in class, trying so hard to do the right thing because I wanted to be chosen, told I was doing a good job and be picked for awards. <laughs> Not sure if you can relate, but I think all of us have this desire to be chosen. Maybe it is for an award or for a sporting team, or maybe it was for the lottery. Maybe it's for a vacation or a special project or party that you knew was happening. All of us have this eagerness to be picked, to be chosen. And when we're not, we can actually feel very discouraged and start to question ourselves as to why we weren't picked or we weren't chosen. And I'm gonna to read to us out of a scripture in 1 Peter 1, and it's Peter writing to a group of people who are refugees and were actually feeling a bit forgotten, alone and left out. And it says in verse two, God the Father knew and chose you long ago and his spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. Today, church, I want to remind us as we remember Jesus that we are chosen, that God has chosen you and he has chosen me and he has chosen us as the corporate body of Christ for his purpose on the earth. And communion today, this wafer that we have and the juice that we have that represents Christ's body and blood reminds us that God has chosen us by sending his son to be sacrificed on the cross for our sin and rising again from the grave. God chose us and he did this. When he did this, he made a new way for us to experience life. He made a new way for us to stand in authority and the power of the cross. And he made a new way for us to be holy. And his sacrifice church wasn't limited or only to a select group of people, but it was inclusive for every single person, not just the good Christians, the great people. No, the blood of Jesus, God's chosen are you and me. It's all of us. And we get the chance today to walk in the same power and authority that Jesus Christ did himself. We are chosen church. So why don't we pray? God, today, would you help us, remind us, help us to remember that you have chosen us. We thank you, first of all. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us to be your people, for choosing us to live holy, for choosing us to be the recipients of your grace, your forgiveness, and your freedom. We accept this today and confidently choose to walk out in the knowledge and the truth that you have chosen us. Not one of us forgotten or left out or alone, but all of us chosen by God for right here and right now. Amen. Why don't we partake and worship together, church?
Well, hello, church. Great to be with you. Tomorrow in Australia and New Zealand, it's a very special day. It's Anzac Day. It's where we gather as a nation on beaches all around Australia at the dawn service where we're watching the uh, sun come over the ocean, um, where we actually are gathering to remember men and women who laid down their lives for you and me as part of World War I, World War II, and all the recent conflicts as well. On that service, that dawn service, in most gatherings, a pastor will stand up and recite the ode to the crowds gathered. Most people in this nation know this ode off by heart. And it goes like this. They shall grow not old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun in the, and in the morning, we will remember them. This ode comes from a poem that was written by Lawrence Bignon, written as a tribute to all of those uh, casualties during World War I. The poem is titled, For the Fallen. In God's book, the Bible, Paul also encourages us around this issue of the spiritually fallen, to not stop and bury ourselves in guilt and shame, rather forcefully press in closer to God. I mean, one of the scriptures that be many that I could point to, but in particular, Hebrews chapter four, verse 16, he writes like this, he said, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. You see, church, God is merciful. Only God can reconcile mercy and justice. He was the one who created the way for this reconciliation to happen. The Bible talks about God's mysterious plan and that he was the one, only one who knew about this plan until he exposed this plan to full view of the whole world when he put his mercy on display at the cross and with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, all history knows what God's mysterious plan is. One of the words used to describe in scripture, uh, mercy and compassion is, is a Hebrew word called chesed. I mean, the definition of that Hebrew word simply says um, kindness, loving kindness. Loving kindness in the English language is really built out of two words. It combines the definition of both of those and then some. It could mean tenderness and consideration towards others. These or those are the key words capturing the essence from a, from a Western perspective about that phrase, loving kindness. Notice that that loving kindness is always pointed towards other people. It's an outward expression, not one of self-seeking or even motivation to meet my needs. If this sounds familiar, it's easy to understand why. It's a biblical word. See, while loving kindness can be considered somewhat archaic, many English Bible translations use it in the Psalms. Alternatively, some of the translations use words like or phrases like steadfast love. By studying the Psalms with translations that use this phrase, loving kindness, you'll discover a new depth of meaning and understanding to these scriptures. I've got a couple examples for you. In Psalm 103, the first couple of verses, it says this in the New King James Version, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Another Psalm, Psalm 69, verse 15 and 16. Let not the flood water overflow me. I mean, that's such a pertinent phrase for where we are right now. Nor let the deep swallow me up or let not the pit shut its mouth on me. Hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. 
Turn to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Each time we come across this phrase, loving kindness, in these passages in the Psalms in particular, it's also suggesting about God's covenant love with you and with me. Pastor Rick Warren says this great phrase, God's love is like an ocean. You can see its beginning, but not its end. Today, no matter what you face, you can rely on God's loving kindness. In the best way, his love is predictable and unchanging and forever. The prophet in Isaiah, Isaiah 54, he says this, for the mountains may move and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. Well, my first point today is really this idea, this thought about truth and love. Did you know that truth and love are married? Let me show it to you in Psalms 85. This verse is 7 to 10. It says, Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I listen carefully to what God um, the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to his faithful people, but let them not return to their foolish ways. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. So our land will be filled with his glory. Unfailing love and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. What an amazing picture this is of the way um, about God's wisdom, how it unfolds in each one of our lives, bringing both the promise of mercy and the powerful expectations of righteousness to marry those things together to a point of reconciliation. God does get angry, especially with injustice and hypocrisy, yet unfailing love and truth are no threat to each of those, which is why in any great relationship, we are able to speak the truth in love. In fact, without truth, there can be no love and also vice versa. God is perfectly integrated with justice and forgiveness, with mercy and loving kindness, with grace and truth. I mean, one of the most powerful illustrations of God's grace and mercy in Western literature has to be um, that great scene in the stirring epic Les Mis that was written by Victor Hugo. I mean, you know the story broadly. We probably have seen musical after musical on this particular um, story. The guy, Gene, have uh, recently finished serving a long prison sentence for stealing bread for his starving family. Once again, he finds himself in desperate straits. With nowhere to go on a raining evening, he's offered shelter by the kindness of a respected man. Yet with no money or work prospects, Jean steals some silver from that house, only to be eventually caught by the local authorities. Jean is dragged back to the residence to be confronted with his wrongdoing. But instead of confirming the crime, the man of the house sees the unfortunate event really as an opportunity. It is, with no exaggeration necessary, the opportunity to either condemn a life or to save one. Employing atonement language, he says to the stunned Jean, he says, this is what he says, forget not, never forget that you have promised to me to use this silver to become an honest man, Jean. My brother, you belong no longer to evil, but to good. It is your soul that I'm buying for you. I withdraw it from the dark thoughts and from the spirit of perdition, and I give it to God. What a great picture of God's redemption, speaking truth with love. I mean, another idea where righteousness and peace have kissed is the uh, true story of one night in 1935, a the New York mayor, Legato, showed up at a night 
court in the poorest ward of the city. He dismissed the judge for that evening and took over the bench. One case in particular involved an elderly woman who was brought uh, stealing bread to feed her grandchildren. Lagardia said, I've got to punish you $10 or 10 days in jail. As he spoke, he threw $10 into his hat. He then fined everyone in the courtroom 50 cents for living in a city where a person has to steal bread so that um, her grandchildren can eat. The hat was passed around in that courtroom and the woman left the courtroom with her fine paid and an additional $47.50. What a great, again, account of mercy and justice in just the right moment where righteousness and peace have kissed. In Psalm 103, this is a well-known psalm to many Christians. And this is my second point, which simply says, forget not. The psalmist writes, let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who have uh, been treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not remain, um, he will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the heavens of the, uh, above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wild flowers. We bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant and those who obey his commandments. I know that was a long psalm, but so much built into there. There's some things that we ought not forget, but not the qualities of God's loving kindness. We must never forget those qualities about how God sees us. In this psalm, we, we find that it starts out that praise is the only appropriate response to God's kind mercy towards you and to me. I mean, just think about and remember um, that C.S. Lewis says that this life is just a shadow land, he, he says. It's, for, it's a foretaste of a better world to come. You see, God forgives all our sin. God heals all of our diseases. He, he redeems us from death. God crowns us with life and mercy. He fills our life with good things. He renews our youth. He provides righteousness and justice for the oppressed. He removes our sin from us as far as the east is from the west. God creates a covenant for all and for all of the future generations. My last point simply starts out the kingdom, God's kingdom, is built upon grace. The writer in Hebrew is where we started. In chapter 4 he says this, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and the spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one whom we are accountable. So then, 
since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours, he understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. I love that scripture. Your confident hope, my confident hope, comes from the word of God being our foundation and allowing the word to pierce into our own soul and our mind and our heart. We don't just read the Word of God, but it reads us as well. God understands us and has completely identifies with all of our weak human issues. The entire kingdom of God is founded upon His grace. And we have a limitless supply of that grace available to us at all times. The Bible encourages us, forget not all of the benefits from following Jesus Christ. In Jesus, some of those benefits, mercy and justice, become fulfilled. So then we should, as Christians, be unapologetic in surrendering our own imperfect lives, setting aside my way for his way. And humbly, humbly accept this new life, a new way of living based on God's grace. Church, I just believe that this message will bless you. If it's blessed you today, we'd love to hear from you. Can you actually comment on the side um, while you're watching online or put in a comment there on YouTube? Or can I even suggest that you would uh, email, of, email us, talk to us at hopeuc.com. I'd love to hear from you about how this message is blessing you. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray that today people will get a deeper revelation, understanding of your grace, your mercy in their lives so that they can come boldly into your throne room and be in your presence. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. God bless your church. Well, it's wonderful to be able to spend time hearing from the Word of God today and and if this message has impacted you personally today, perhaps you want to take another step and I'd love to lead you in that next step of saying yes to Jesus and saying yes to his love. This is not about um, a religion. It's not about joining a club. It's actually about a relationship with Jesus himself. And it's as simple as um, saying yes to him. It's about believing that he is our Lord and Saviour. It says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In the Passion Translation, it says you will experience salvation. Salvation comes not from what I can do or what I deserve, but it's because of everything that Jesus has done. So I would love to lead you in a prayer today to receive um, God's salvation, to, to say, I believe in you, Jesus, and to experience, as that translation said, experience salvation. So let me pray with you right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on a cross. Thank you that salvation is not about my performance, what I can do, what I deserve, but it's actually about everything that Jesus did in dying on the cross. And today I say I want to be a Christian. I want to be a follower of Jesus. And I thank you as I confess you are Lord, as I believe that in my heart, that I am saved. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer this morning in your heart today, I want to encourage you just to click the button right there on your screen and one of our team will be in touch with you and, and just help you with the next steps on this wonderful adventure of being a follower of Christ.
sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Who I once was lost, and but now I'm found. Who was blind, but now I see.
Thank you so much, Pastor Mark, for that amazing message. Yeah. If there's anything that stood out to you or tugged on your heart, um, we have our team available in the chat room. So why don't you head over there to ask some questions mm. or conversate about something that triggered your thought and, you know, mm. something new in you. Mm. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, that's it. And this morning, uh, before we go, I want to encourage you around your offering. Uh, offering and giving to the house of God is a big part of our worship here at Hope You See. And um, you can click the link in the chat room right now. Um, alternatively, you can head over to our Hope You See website or our Hope You See app and follow the giving links on both of those platforms. And I just want to say thank you so much, Church, for your generosity and being a big part of building the kingdom of God here on the Central Coast and around the globe. Well, that's it for this morning. We've loved having you here online with us today. I hope you've had fun. I hope you took notes. I hope you're feeling stirred up and inspired to go and be like Christ in your week this week. Are we going to pronounce the blessing? We are. Are you yes. ready? <laughs> Say it with us, please, at home, nice and loud. I pray that God, who is the source of hope, will fill us completely with joy and peace because we place our trust in Him. Then we will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be blessed, church.